Hey guys, it's me again. My name is John, and in this video, I'm going to quickly talk about shortcuts with Workboard. So recently, Slack released Shortcuts, a really low friction, high visibility way for users to perform actions on your Slack apps, including Workboard. Some Slack apps already support shortcuts, but you're pretty much limited to only actions on those apps. With Workboard, you can customize the shortcuts your apps can have and what the shortcut can do. There are two types of shortcuts, global shortcuts and message shortcuts. Global shortcuts can be found on the Composer menu. or from the search bar, but you have to know what you're looking for. And because they can be launched from anywhere, they only have team and user context, but not channel or message context. Message shortcuts are actually a relabeling of an existing feature that Slack had previously known as message actions. They can be found on messages themselves. That's why message shortcuts not only have team and user context, they also have channel and message context. To keep up with Slack's update, we've also followed suit by updating our old new message action trigger to the new and improved new shortcuts trigger. This trigger now supports both global and message shortcuts. And if you've been using the new message action trigger from before, don't worry, you won't run into any backward compatibility issues. I actually made a video about message actions when it first came out, and although its name has changed, its functionality hasn't, so it's still relevant today. You can still do some pretty cool stuff like using the contents of the original message in your bot recipe. I'll leave a link in the description below for you guys to check out. So, how do you use the shortcut trigger? The trigger allows you to respond to a shortcut event invoked by a user on your app. To start, you want to choose a shortcut type. If you want your shortcut to be invoked from the Composer menu or the search bar in Slack, use the global shortcut. If you want your shortcut to be invoked from messages because you want to use the contents of the message in follow-up recipe actions, use the message shortcut. Next, you'll need to provide a shortcut name. This generates a callback ID, which you'll use to create the shortcut on your Slack app but we'll come back to this later on in the video. When your shortcut is invoked, you'll likely want to request more info from the user. You can define these fields under the command input fields. When the shortcut is triggered, Workbot launches a dialog to collect them. If you'd rather customize how the form looks like, you can skip the command input fields and open your own modal instead. Let's take a closer look at the command input fields. If you scroll down to the bottom of the form, you'll find that dialogs can display command input fields in three different ways. Text, text area, and select. Use text if you expect short answers and text area if you're expecting long answers. The select control allows you to define a select menu with five different types of menu options. Users, channels, conversations, static and dynamic. Users, channels and conversations lists the users, channels and conversations in your Slack team. When users make a selection, Workbot returns the user channel or conversation IDs respectively. With static, you can define your own list of menu options. Comma separate them if the parameter names are the same as the values. Otherwise, separate the parameter name and values with colon and name value pairs with commas. In this example, I've created a custom menu options for users to choose priority. Dynamic menus are also possible but I won't go into them in this video. I'll leave a link to a guide I wrote in the description below. 
The Copy Original Text into Dialog field is unique to message shortcuts, and it allows you to copy the original message into one of the text or text area dialog fields in your command input fields. In this example, I've chosen for the original message to be copied into the description field. If I run the message shortcut, you can see that the message shows up in the description field as configured. Now let's hop over to our Slack app to see how a shortcut is created. Now as we mentioned earlier, if you go to your Slack app, you can create a shortcut. If you're the creator or a collaborator of your Slack app, then you should be familiar with this page. You can create shortcuts under the Interactivity and Shortcuts section. Here's also where you decide what type of shortcut you want to create, global or message. Each Slack shortcut is tied to a WorkBot shortcut trigger via the callback ID. In this example, I've created a shortcut with a callback ID from the shortcut trigger found in the recipe. This ensures that the correct recipe is invoked when users click on your shortcut. And there you have it. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found this video useful. If you've played around with shortcuts and want to leave your feedback, leave a comment below. If you like this video and want to see more content around WorkBot, uh, please subscribe to my channel to be notified of new videos. See you guys next time.